Um, so with that, I would like to welcome Lenny. Uh, he's going to talk today. Uh, uh, he's our, our keynote, and he's going to talk about the five E's and how technology can meet the diverse learners, uh, diverse, the diverse ne needs of learners um, for our conference. Thank you. Well, good morning. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad we worked through the, the technical issues. Can everybody hear me? Yes. All right. Good. Um, when we get to the Q and A portion of this, you might want to tip the camera up a little bit because right now I have a great view of the bottom of a table and the chairs, so I wouldn't be able to see who's uh, who's talking. So um, let let me give you a quick overview. Katie is uh, we're a suburb of Houston. Um, we are in the energy corridor of the, of the city of Houston, and we're a fast growth school district. We add about uh, 2,500 to 3,000 students a year. Um, I want to clarify one thing. We, we are not the largest school district in the, in the state. We have about 60,000 kids, and like I said, we're growing at a very rapid pace. Very diverse um, group of students. We have about 71 languages that we speak in our school district. So when you talk about diversity, you know, we are, we are living it, especially because we're in the energy corridor. So we have a lot of um, people coming from overseas to, to move into our school district. I want to thank you for inviting me to participate in the, in the conference today. You know, I was so excited when I saw the topic that you wanted me to speak on because that's my passion and it's been my passion for about three years. You know, technology, technology is such a key component to how we are educating kids today. And when you tie in the diverse learner and the diversity of learning styles, the one thing that goes across the board for any style or any student is technology. And when you look at that as a foundational piece, what you have to understand is that technology for the students today pre-K all the way through higher ed, it's not a tool or it's a not a nice to have. It's a way that they function. It's a way that they operate. And I think as soon as educators and education institutions start to really embrace this and accept it, that technology is just a part of life, I think that's when you're going to start to see a dramatic change. I'm going to give you a perspective um, from, from some conversations I've had. Throughout the, the last two or three years, we've spent a lot of time talking to our community and our parents about technology, about what we're doing with technology in the classroom and why we're doing it. During those conversations, we bring in students and we show student work and we have the kids talk about what they're doing with mobile learning, what they're doing with Web 2.0, what they're doing in the area of digital citizenship. I'm going to talk more about those specifically but we bring the kids in to talk to the parents about this. We bring teachers in to talk to the parents about what they're seeing from students, what they're seeing from student work product. And so the parents get this real thorough understanding of what's going on in the classroom. In every one of these meetings, I get the question from these parents, why, why aren't we hearing about this? You know, this is exciting stuff. This is new stuff. This, is, this isn't how I was taught in the classroom. Why aren't our kids coming through the front door at the end of a school day saying, Mom, look at what I did and look at what I used today? And I respond to that question and I tell the parents, this is kind of a tongue-in-cheek answer, but I think it's really relevant. When you were in school and you came home at the end of the day, did you burst through your front door and talk to your mom and dad and say, Mom and Dad, look at what i got to use today. I used my pencil. And, and the parents in the room, you know, the parents in the room, they all kind of sit back. And I think it really hits home to them. Because technology for these students today is like the pencil was for us when we were in school. And so I think once parents start really getting that understanding, then they're going to realize it's not new and exciting for the kids to be using this technology because this is just how they view and operate in the real world. So that's, that's kind of the, the preface behind what we're doing in, in Katie and what we've been doing. You know, when we sit and we look at the last two years, in 2009, we sat back as a school district and we said, we recognize we need to change the way we're teaching. And so fundamentally, we focused on a philosophical change in the way we're instructing kids in the classroom. And when we sat down and we looked at this, 
this, this new approach to teaching, we wanted to identify what are those things that are going to facilitate that change. And I will tell you, technology by itself is not the answer. Technology by itself is just like the pencil, if we go back to that analogy. The pencil by itself is not going to change anything. It's what you do with that pencil that starts all the conversations about the five E's. So when we sat down in 2009 and started talking about what are the things that we need to start incorporating to make this philosophical change in the way we instruct, the first thing we looked at obviously was technology. We wanted to really understand what we're doing in the classroom is effective. We wanted to start looking at mobile learning because mobile learning back in 2009 was, was a really new concept. Um, it's one that I had been thinking about for a couple of years just by watching my kids operate. You know, my kids have a laptop, they have a cell phone, the majority of the time they're on their cell phone texting, you know, talking to their other students. So I've been thinking of, for quite a few years, how do we incorporate this device? And it's the one device that, uh, from a secondary perspective, 99% of the kids are going to have. Economic situation aside, every one of your kids have some type of a phone. So we wanted to test that theory. So we had the technology path that we were going to go down. Then we also looked at what are we changing when we talk about instruction. So we really started to focus on Web 2.0. And we really wanted to start incorporating Web 2.0 technology into the classroom. And so we created a group that was specifically responsible for being the champions to go out on the campuses and work directly with those teachers to talk and work with them on modeling the new Web 2.0 technologies as well as um, mentoring them on how to do it. At the same time, we created a Web 2.0 toolbox. Because what I didn't want was the flavor of the day Web 2.0 tool to be at every campus out there in some different form or fashion. And it was very difficult for us to support a structure where they could use any tool that they wanted. So we came up with a Web 2.0 toolbox that the teachers then could draw on and go into. And those were the tools that, that they could select and use in their classroom. So we had this group of people that were responsible for getting this out into the classroom. We had this toolbox that we were going to use with the teachers. Um, when the school year started in 2009, my biggest concern was how do we get this, um, this new philosophical approach? How do we get it to take? How do we get people interested in this? Four months into the school year, um, I realized that wasn't a challenge. The challenge was, how do I get 30 people to go out to all of these campuses because this thing is a brush fire and it's taking off. And what that showed us was the teachers were ready for something new in their classroom. And once we started providing this mechanism, they took it and ran with it. More importantly, the students. The students picked up on this and they started pushing their teachers even further than what we were thinking about. So in 2009, we had our technology path we were focused on. We had our Web 2.0 technology or path that we were on. The third thing that we felt very strong about in 2009 is it, if we're going to philosophically change how we're instructing, we need to philosophically change what some of the focus points are. And so we started incorporating in digital citizenship. And I think that's a key component to educating the kids now. It's a responsibility I think all of us have, K through 12 and even higher ed, is digital responsibility, digital citizenship. In fact, in 2009, we changed the name of our acceptable use guideline to responsible use guideline because we didn't want the kids just to do acceptable behavior. We wanted them to understand what it is to be responsible users of the internet so that when they graduated from KDISD, they were prepared to live in this digital world. So we started down this path in 2009 with these three focused initiatives to help facilitate this cultural change. From a Web 2.0 standpoint, it was amazing to see the breadth and depth that this was accepted by our teachers, by our students, and by our parents. We spent a lot of time talking to our community people about why we're incorporating in blogs, why we're incorporating in wikis, why we're incorporating in thread thread casts and voice casts um, and getting our parents comfortable because there's a risk to this. This new way of educating is such a foreign way for parents and community members. You need to make sure that you're bringing them along and that they're understanding the risks. More importantly, that they're understanding the benefits. And that's what I think we've done a really good job. And, and there are some bumps in the road. What you don't want to do is abandon this very important effort because you hit the first bump in the road. 
From a mobile learning perspective, we gave uh, smartphones to uh, one fifth grade class at an elementary school, and we saw incredible results, 130 devices. Um, we saw benchmark scores go up 20 to 30 points in math and science.